I think Paris has been a remarkable Olympic Games, but one of the things that has troubled me both in the lead up to and during these games has been the extraordinary lengths that people have gone to, especially the International Olympic Committee, to guarantee that at these first ever gender equal games, there was a team from Afghanistan represented, given that Afghanistan is the only country in the world that practices gender apartheid. When the Taliban took over the government in August of 2021, I very closely documented the stories of many of the Afghan female athletes who fled the country fearing persecution, not just of themselves, but of their families. I've stayed in touch with some of them. Some live in Australia, but others like Paralympian Zakia Kudadadi now lives in Paris. She's gonna be the only female member of the Paralympic Committee's refugee team. She competes in the sport of Taekwondo and is a really strong medal contender, having won the European Championships earlier this year. One member of the IOC's refugee team competing in the new sport of breaking is Manisha Talash. She got an enthusiastic reaction from the sellout crowd when she unveiled a blue cape with the words, free Afghan women. Could there be a better place to do such a thing than at the first ever gender equal games? Despite her positive reaction from the sellout crowd, she was disqualified. A statement from the World Dance Sport Federation said this. The World Dance Sport Federation maintains a firm stance against the politicization of sport. We strongly believe that sport should remain politically neutral and field of play should be free of any political statement. Following the recent incident, the WDSF wishes to clarify that B-Girl, Talash, was disqualified for displaying a political slogan on her attire during the pre-qualifier battle. The results have been updated accordingly. So this is my question. Is highlighting the plight of all girls and women inside Afghanistan political or is it about humanity? I don't think the two should be confused. At the previous Olympic Games, the Winter Games in Beijing 2022, with the threat of a Russian invasion of Ukraine looming, Ukrainian athlete Vladislav Horaskovich flashed a hand-painted sign at the end of his skeleton run, which said, no war in Ukraine. At the time, it was deemed to be a humanitarian appeal rather than a political one. A statement from the IOC said this, this was a general call for peace and the matter is now closed and there was no repercussion for the athlete. So why have these two athletes been treated so differently? Minaj, the breaker at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games, and Vladislav Horaskovich, the Ukrainian skeleton athlete from Beijing 2022. Now, still on Afghanistan, the team from that country was run by the National Olympic Committee of Afghanistan, which is operating in exile based here in Paris. It was made up of 16 members, three men and three women. None of the women clearly lives inside Afghanistan because they would not have been allowed to exit or compete because they can't play sport, they can't get an education. Essentially, they are housebound. The one athlete that does reside in Afghanistan is judoka Mohammed Samim Faizad. After his opening bout, he tested positive for a banned substance. He has since returned to Afghanistan, where there are fears for his safety. I've been told by sources close to some of the team members that he received messages from the Taliban saying his family had been detained and he was to return to the country immediately. Now, while some of those who are close to him outside Afghanistan have spoken to him since he's returned, none of them can vouch for his safety and there are serious concerns. As one person told me, Afghanistan is not safe for anyone. So my question is this, should there have been a team from Afghanistan competing at all, given the pressure and the security risks around each of the members of that team? Clearly, the athletes themselves wanted to compete. They all have lifetime ambitions to be Olympians. And in that respect, those dreams have been fulfilled. But the cost afterwards, and perhaps we will never know what the ultimate cost has been for some of these members of the Afghanistan team. Tomorrow, I'm going to bring you a feature interview with the Paralympic team member from the refugee team, Zakia Kudadadi. I hope you can join me then. 
Thanks for subscribing to the Sports Ambassador podcast on all the usual social media channels.